Hey there cats and goodies, I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video I'd like to talk about Solo, a Star Wars story, which thanks to the intervention of a friend I was actually able to see somewhat unexpectedly, and uh, I just had a blast with this movie. It was a fun, exhilarating time set within the Star Wars universe, and I feel bad, frankly, for anyone who has given over to their, you know, own sort of sense of preconceptions or uh, overhanging nostalgia, you know, that no one forevermore should ever play Han Solo except for Harrison Ford and all that kind of stuff. The people who with their pitchforks and, and you know, torches are calling to boycott the film and who are basking in the, the glow of the, as of the time of this recording, uh, underperformance financially of the film and everything like that. If you're any one of these people who subscribes to that, who thinks this movie is abhorrent and should never have been made and was nothing we ever asked for or wanted and aren't going to give it, you know, even, even the ghost's breadth of a chance, click off this video because you're not going to be happy with my reaction to it. I had a blast watching this movie. I was absolutely sold on Alden Ehrenreich's portrayal of the young Han Solo. Absolutely loved his chemistry with Chewbacca in the film, with Donald Glover's Lando Calrissian. Amelia Clark was fantastic. Woody Harrelson. Um, Thandie Newton, for as much of the film as she was in... <laughs> <laughs> you know, believe it there, uh, was, you know, serviceable and, and uh, L337, Lando's droid and everything like that. It was all a mad fun time. Now, going into this movie, I was really sort of worried about all of the, uh, you know, paying homage to things that we knew we were familiar with with the character of Han Solo you know the origins of things like how he gets his gun we saw in the trailer Harrelson's character Tobias Beckett throws it to him and um the whole exchange between he and Lando about Han versus Han and everything which is touched upon in the film and uh the Falcons making the Kessel Run and all these different things they are all a part of this movie but thankfully so at least for me None of it is ever really invasive or takes you out of the movie. Everything is serviceable to the plot and to the characterization. Even the final sort of shot, if you will, a <laughs> little wink and nudge, uh, tip of the hat to uh, who shot first, put it that way. Um, the given scenario, the way it plays out, it was pitch perfect to me. Um, everything about this movie, you know, I'm not really going to talk about spoilers or anything like that. There are too many people who are just bold-facedly putting spoilers out there all across Facebook. There's one of my friends in particular who uh, is being a real D-bag about it. You know who you are if you're watching this video. I'm on to you. I've seen your posts. Um, just just lambasting all of the, the movie all told, all of the spoilers and everything, the twists and turns. One key one in particular toward the end of the film. And I went into this video thinking to myself, I don't want to do any of that. I don't want to talk about any of the specifics, uh, just sort of a tip of the hat to things that I, I thought really worked well in, in the movie. And it's the performances, the casting, the chemistry between all of the, the cast of characters and everything. Paul Bettany as the you know pseudo villain for the film, which you glean from the trailers and such like that. Everybody in this was pitch perfect in the job they were meant to perform. And Ron Howard completely delivered on a silver platter a a solo movie worth being explored, worth being experienced as far as I'm concerned. You know, I'm not somebody, as much as I grew up with the original Star Wars, I was there with most people my age. It was really my first uh, experience to sci-fi fantasy, to fandom at all. I had the toys. You know, I watched the VHS when, when my dad had recorded it off HBO of the original A New Hope before it was even known as A New Hope, you know, episode four. Um, I wore that tape out. <laughs> they, my my parents had to pseudo lose it because, you know, like I wore it out. I played it over and over and over and over again. I was obsessed with C-3PO and R2-D2 and Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, the whole lot, you know, and, um, so I, I'm right there with everybody who is using that, that excuse that I grew up Star Wars. I grew up with it, you know, as sort of uh, to, to put up their hand and say, talk to the hand. You know, uh, this isn't my Star Wars anymore. The latest movies, uh, the prequels and all, all of this, you know, complaining and everything like that, bashing it left, right and center. What is the point? What are you getting out of it if you're if you're going to, you know, wave your pitchforks and, and torches and, and just slam anyone who likes these things? What what satisfaction do you derive out of that, out of out of boycotting these films and being a, a vocal, you know, minority against it and things like that? I don't get I can't wrap my mind around what you get out of that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, if you don't like it, that's fine. Ignore it. Move on. 
Go back to the things you do like. Find other things you might like and consider, you know, that kind of thing. This, for me, you know, I didn't have any of those preconceptions going into it. I didn't have any of that holdover of my nostalgia as much as I love Han Solo, the original Han Solo from, you know, A New Hope to Empire Strikes Back to Return of the Jedi to, of course, The Force Awakens as portrayed by Harrison Ford. As much as I love that character, this was very much cut from the same cloth. Lawrence Kasdan and his son wrote the script to this movie. They're very familiar with the, the character arc, the, the history of Han Solo that we know and love, and a lot of that went into the plot of this film, into the script, you know, that kind of thing. And um, Ron Howard, again, delivered on that script and then some. All the performances, all of the actors cast in this film were spectacular as far as I'm concerned. And so that's my take in a nutshell. Hate on it all you want. Hate on this video all you want. I'll leave the, the up thumb and down thumb completely open. Hit that down thumb as many times as your stupid ass wants. If you don't like somebody actually saying they had a fun time with this movie. And uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, may the force be with you just as well as anyone else, even though you're a Sith Lord at heart. And um, but yeah, otherwise, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below. If you've seen Solo, a Star Wars story, love it or hate it, we can certainly agree to disagree as long as we're amicable and respectable about it and everything like that in the comments. Um, but I'd love to hear your your take on the film, love it or hate it, anything goes in the comments below. And otherwise, it'll be pretty much it for me on this one. This video finds you well. <laughs> I'll catch you all later. Peace.